everybody, I'm State Representative Kelly Butler, and I'm here today with Swagna Reddy, who is a health policy expert. In fact, she's a clinical assistant professor at ASU, or Arizona State University School of, uh, sorry, the College of Health Solutions. And for some reason, we dressed alike today because we are thinking, uh, we're thinking the same. Yes. But we are concerned about a couple of bills that are, that moved through the legislature and have now been signed by the governor. These bills um, would allow the expansion of what's called short-term limited duration insurance policies. And it's such a misnomer because they're called short-term, but what we did with these plans, and they're already available in Arizona, you can get them now for six months or you can renew it for a year. But what these bills did was they expanded it for, you can renew it uh, at the one year mark, you can renew it again for a second year, and then you can renew it for a third year. So this is a huge expansion of these plans and they're really concerning because they don't protect people with pre-existing conditions and they just they're really lacking in protection so what I want to do is and, and again they were they've these have been signed by the governor we're gonna have a, even a press conference later this morning because it's a really serious health threat so I'd love to have Swapna explain to us why from her perspective as a public policy expert why these plans are so bad yeah. Well, thank you, and thanks so much for having me. Sure, thanks for being here. Um, yes, and thanks so much also for bringing attention to this issue. So I think when we talk about short-term health insurance plans, I think on the face and from this 100-foot perspective, it looks like a really great option, right? Because as we know, there are lots of issues with affordability with health insurance. I mean, that's a fact. Right. Um, and I think all of us want people to be able to access comprehensive coverage. We want them to have health insurance and we want them to have choice. I think we all agree with that. So if we take some of the politics kind of just out of this, because this is really not that, doesn't have to be such a political conversation, and really think about what is a short-term health insurance plan, short-term, especially limited duration plan, and kind of what are the potential implications. You know, we, we have to think about it sort of in two separate versions. One is actually what does it do to to our health insurance market plans, right? So in Arizona, we have an Affordable Care Act health insurance market plan, um, or health insurance uh, markets. And, um, and so what happens is when people who feel that maybe they don't need to pay uh, higher premiums than they feel that they need to exit these plans because some of these short-term plans feel very attractive to them. They're cheaper, right? And if you're someone that doesn't utilize health care very often, right. or your loved ones that are on your plan doesn't utilize health care very often, a sort of um, a, a, a kind of bare bones, cheaper plan might be really attractive to you. So what happens to the health insurance market um, when that happens? Well, so these kind of lower utilizers of health insurance leave these markets, so then who's left, right? And I think that that's what's really concerning, right. number one, um, because who ends up being left are people who actually are higher utilizers of health insurance, or they have loved ones that depend on that coverage. And so then um, the kind of overall risk of those markets increase, and it ends up becoming more expensive for those folks. So that's number one, and I think that that's really important to think of from kind of a larger societal perspective, and also what it's doing to our, what it potentially could do to our health insurance markets. And to that point, I mean, I want to, I don't know if you saw this article, but this article was talking about the affordable health care market now, mm -hmm. and the fact that we, it has been, it has been way too expensive, there's, there's only been one choice, one company operating in each of the counties in Arizona, mm -hmm. but this next year, we were looking at, and we are looking at, hopefully, uh, the new companies entering the market. In, in fact, aren't there supposed to be four now in Maricopa and three in Pima? Mm -hmm. So that market is improving. And in fact, this article says that uh, that they think that in, the premiums could come down as much as 10%. Yeah, so this is an excellent point. As we think about these markets, I mean, Arizona has been kind of um, the, the focus point of so much right. national attention, you know, during the, the, the last national election, um, really known as sort of ground zero for a lot of things that, um, that, that pose challenges for consumers. For, for, for that pose uh, challenges for consumers and patients in Arizona. Well, here's what happened, though. In the last year, what we've seen, and it's been a little surprising even for those of us that, like, kind of weirdly watch this all the time. <laughs> oh, who doesn't? Yeah, of course, of course. Well, I kind of weirdly do. Uh, but what, what we've seen is a real sort of resilience in the market here in Arizona. Um, we have a population that needs comprehensive coverage. This is less about the Affordable Care Act and if you like the Affordable Care Act and more about people need comprehensive 
comp comprehensive health insurance. Right. And that's what we've seen all around the country, and they don't want to be discriminated based on pre-existing conditions. So what we've seen with our market is actually our premiums are, are going down quite a bit um, in the double digits, actually, um, a, a larger decrease than any of us would have predicted. And we have new insurers that are coming back to the marketplace right. in Arizona. They want to provide um, plans, and that's only better for consumers, right, because that increases choice mm -hmm. and conceivably reduces costs. So when we're when we're going to see, you know, if we have a, if we're creating an environment where there's a potential exodus of, of those that are lower utilizers of healthcare, that's only going to rock these markets once again. And we're just now in this place where they're starting to stabilize. So that's very right. dangerous. Yeah, we were talking about the disruption to, and and how why would we be doing that when it's finally getting a little more stable? And let me just tell for people who are watching. I know it's it's a weird time. You're probably commuting from home, but if you have any questions, and you I guess you could type them into Facebook. Uh, and, you know, it's rare to have a public health expert available. She's on her way to work, and I made her stop here. So if you have any questions, just type them in, and we'll try to answer them as we go. But, okay, so we've talked about kind of the system and yeah. why it's so bad for Arizona to introduce these dangerous, risky plans. In fact, when we were hearing this in testimony in committee, the lobbyist was said four times how risky these plans were. Mm. So let's talk about what kind of risks they're going to propose for people yeah. on the plan. And, and, you know, we heard from a lot of patient advocacy folks from the Cancer Network, the Lymphoma Society, the Lung, Asso the Lung Cancer Association, just uh, Children's Action Alliance, the Public Health Association. So many of our public health advocates are against these plans. So let's just talk about what kind of risk they put if you're just a consumer. Sure. Say you, you're going on, on looking for a plan and you go, oh, hey, this one's $60 a month uh, versus, you know, a comprehensive plan, which could be 400 maybe, you know, depending and you could get subsidies. But uh, so tell me what that what that looks like for that consumer who signs up for a $60 plan. Yeah, so that's a great question. So, you know, I said there's sort of two concerns. One is the marketplace concern, which mm -hmm. we just discussed. Right. And the second concern is really at the individual level. Right. Um, and when I say that, I think somebody who doesn't necessarily utilize health insurance very much, it feels that they're pretty healthy. Right. You know, look, I, if I need to have health insurance, um, why not just go get kind of a cheaper plan? I don't really need it very of much. Of course. Who uh, needs it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to get sick or yeah. in an accident? That yeah. never happens. But you bring up an excellent point. Um, you know, we're really healthy until the moment when suddenly we're not healthy right. and we need health insurance. And we'll talk about that in a second. But so what's what's kind of concerning about these plans, it's not the cost. I think, you know, cheaper plans are always great. We want affordability in the marketplace, whatever that marketplace is, right? What is concerning here is what these plans actually cover. So if you, as, an, as a consumer, as an individual, join on to these plans and you um, think that you're, you know, paying for health insurance and suddenly there's a need that you have that these plans don't cover. So, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of health services that some of these plans don't cover. Things like mental health right right, right. Um, a lot of preventative maternity care. care so what if you get pregnant even if you didn't plan to yeah yeah, yeah. what about maternity care right yeah. I know we're both moms right, here, right. and um, apparently it's quite expensive to have a child and you don't want to have no insurance when you're doing that right yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely and we don't want to discourage that right but so what happens when you've been paying it, your premiums and you think you have health insurance and then suddenly you realize when you need it that coverage doesn't actually cover what you need. And I think that that's when it becomes really concerning because um, when we go back to, you know, the Affordable Care Act and the protections that it provides, it's really less about what you think ideologically about the Affordable Care Act and more about, look, the Affordable Care Act um, provides protections against being discriminated for pre-existing conditions. Turns out that's really important to the public. Right. And it turns out it's really important to Arizonans, and we saw that in the midterm elections. It was really such a defining issue in the midterm elections, regardless of political affiliation. Same with having comprehensive coverage, right? So, like, in the ACA, there's 10 essential benefits. That means if you purchase a plan, um, that the insurer has to provide these 10 essential benefits. It's really a reaction to the fact that in the past, that wasn't the case. People had insurance and they weren't getting comprehensive coverage. So my concern is, I have no problem necessarily with things being cheaper. I think that's a great thing, right. but it's just what is being covered. And then what happens when you don't have coverage, but you get sick, right? Right. Well, and the, 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 during the committee, we were talking about the gaps that this can create. Yes. So, for example, if you are, say, your child is covered under this plan and they get cancer. And say they get cancer on in January. Yeah. 
they could very easily run out of a, a lifetime benefit mm -hmm. that one of these plan caps mm -hmm. um, in just a few months, really, yeah. depending on the lifetime benefit. And then that person is stuck without any option until mm -hmm. it, it's, it's time to re-enroll in the only place they can go to get comprehensive care, which is the the ACA. Yeah. Um, and so you could have months go by where you are unable to access coverage for your cancer treatment, or you're just going to, you know, declare bankruptcy like like people used to have to do. Yeah. So, I mean, just the gaps in coverage is so concerning. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what's, you bring up an excellent point, once again, um, which is frankly that in these in short-term insurance um, options, what happens is there's an opportunity for the insurer to cap how much is covered per day. Okay, and sometimes something like a thousand dollars a day feels like a lot when you're perfectly sure, healthy. Sure, you're signing up. You're like, wow, this is great. Sure, you're like thousand dollars a day is a <laughs> right. lot. Well, it turns out when you're, if you get say admitted to a hospital, thousand dollars a day tends to not be so much, right? In fact, I found out the average U.S. hospital stays five thousand a day, and that's just the average. So I'm sure there are, you know, obviously care that's much more expensive than that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Or just turn in terms of limitations to your actual plan. So let's say something does happen. Let's say you do need covered. Let's say um, a loved one that's on your plan, something happens to them. When there's these limits, what happens when you've reached your limit, right? And I think the answer is we kind of know what happens because this was happening for decades right. in our country, especially prior to the passage of the Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Care Act is really a reaction and an attempt to fix this, um, which is that when people, which is what lots of people are either uninsured or they're frankly underinsured and that's right. the larger issue here and so what ends up happening well they go to the emergency room for care um, they uh, have to go they have to be cared for under un uncompensated care plans at our hospital system right or they're, they're frankly dipping into savings or as you said going into sometimes worst case scenarios bankruptcy to cover their costs so it's not like we don't know what happens when people become underinsured and need coverage we know what happens because we've right. seen it we've seen lots of it oh yeah and you know going back to that that to that precarious place instead we could have been you know strengthening mm -hmm. protections for people with pre-existing conditions and finding ways to make ACA marketplace plans more affordable uh, but we didn't do that instead we all we are seeing are these threats to people with pre-existing conditions and and this is really buyer beware and so I think at this point because this bill has passed the governor for some reason has signed this you're gonna see these plans now in in our marketplace I was really concerned and talked about the marketing of these plans yeah. Uh, I, I had a, a paper that said a bunch of attorneys general uh, were concerned that the departments of insurance and their states were not going to be able to to make sure that deceptive marketing isn't occurring. So yeah. people might think they're they're purchasing a quality plan, yeah. and then you find out that it isn't. I mean, how terrifying is that? Well, yeah. and and and. That's a really interesting point because, I mean, have you ever looked at your health insurance plan? I have not. <laughs> yeah, well, um, it, you know, you may, whether you do or you yeah, don't, it's kind I mean, of the same thing because it's really confusing to navigate, right? It, absolutely, and, and it, it is, and it's intentionally confusing. They, we, we were, I was seeing examples of people who, you know, it said you're not covered for a pre-existing condition. And then you went and you found out that you had breast, that this woman went and found out she had breast cancer that she had, it, you know, several months before when she signed up. They said, oh, well, that was a pre-existing condition, even though she didn't know she had it. Yeah. I mean, how many of us, you know, it's just, this is just opening such a terrifying, scary door, and it's not what we should be doing in public policy at all. Yeah, you know, and I think when we think about kind of public health, population health, what works for populations, mm -hmm. look, what works for populations is to have comprehensive coverage, and that is accessible. And I think we can all agree there's certainly been challenges with that, you know, with the Affordable Care Act, with our state mm -hmm. insurance market plans. Um, that being said, as we mentioned, there has been this kind of writing of the ship direction towards writing mm -hmm. of the ship. And I think it's really dangerous to not let that ship write itself um, and to actually try things that are kind of going backwards or sort of regressing a bit here in terms of what we're offering consumers. And to your point about how confusing it is and trying to navigate and deception the deception piece, it's really hard to figure out what's in your insurance plan. It's hard for me to figure out what's in my insurance plan. I just changed my plan. And um, I had to get on the phone and have somebody explain it to me, to be perfectly honest. You know, the other piece that I wanted to mention, I saw a description of these short-term plans. Um, a great analogy was thinking about them like a, a donut tire 
um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of driving on a donut tire when what you actually need is like a full size tire. You know, donut tire is really not meant to be something that you're driving on all the time and it's not meant to be long term. It's kind of a short term. It'll get you there. It's like a gap you know, fills a gap. Um, that's exactly what I think these plans are. They're not, they were never intended to right. be long-term plans, right? They were intended to be about three-month plans to fill a gap until you got comprehensive right. coverage. Um, so I think it's really dangerous to, you know, drive around on a donut to also have, similarly to also have health insurance that was meant to just kind of cover a gap to actually be your long-term insurance. For plan. three years. Yeah. yeah. No, it is scary. And, and, well, there's just, you know, I don't know that we have so much more to say other than I just hope people are really careful when they're looking and these things are, you're going to see these popping up online, marketing, you know, cheap insurance and be careful and make sure that you know what you're, what you're getting into. And, you know, we should be, we should be doing a better job protecting people with pre-existing conditions and that should always be our, um, our objective when we're doing anything in insurance right now. So I'm just, well, I hope this was informative to, to someone out there, um, and I am so grateful for Swap and Ready for joining me today. You know, it's it's always important and I, when we're making policy to get the, get the word of experts and not just think we know. We need to find out for sure. And so it's so nice of you to be here today, and Thank thanks you. for watching, and be careful out there. Thank you.